Germany, June 1923. The inflation rate is over 30,000% per month. Your life savings has just become worthless. Prices are doubling every four days and society is literally collapsing. That was the Weimar Republic, but to many experts, this unimaginable situation is coming here to the United States. In today's video, we look at this crazy possibility and examine interview clips, graphs, and facts that point to a rapidly deteriorating situation here in the States. Today, we answer the great question, is the dollar going to die? To answer this, we're first going to look at what happened in Germany back in the 1920s. Their hyperinflation disaster is a long story filled with many chapters that we could spend hours, possibly days on. For this video, we're going to focus on the main issue. You can read about the details on your own, but in summary, the main source of these problems came down to the money printing the government was doing. You see, Germany lost World War I and was ordered by its enemies to pay large sums of money in damages. These debts were settled outside the German mark, which means that the government had to exchange its very own currency to something like the US dollar or the British pound in order to pay these debts off. But as governments so often do, they get greedy and to shorten the process, they simply began printing German marks like crazy in order to pay for these massive debts. It took years, but eventually this plan resulted in a disaster where inflation destroyed the mark, making it eventually useless. History, as you know, tends to repeat itself. And while it's always popular to make doomsday predictions, one man is not only predicting this, but putting his money where his mouth is. Dr. Michael Berry. The famous hedge fund manager who made a lot of money betting on the housing market crash is also now betting on a different sort of crash, one much worse than 2008. I've already made a video about his big bet earlier this year, but this video has a massive and surprising update. Hedge funds, as you may already know, are required by the SEC to publish some of their investments publicly every quarter. This form is called a 13F and it provides insights into the minds of the world's best investors. Scion Capital Management just published their newest update and the results are quite shocking. As you may remember one quarter ago, Burry's 13F caused a massive stir in financial media when it was revealed that he was shorting Tesla and positioning himself for a massive surge in inflation by betting on various treasury instruments with calls and puts. No one can forget Barry's tweet from February of 2021 which outright predicted Weimar hyperinflation here in the United States. This wild prediction was supported by his big bets on ETFs like the TBT and TLT. Essentially, these are complex leveraged ETFs that attempt to provide investors with exposure to U.S. Treasuries. Some are inverse, others are long, which makes this position sort of confusing, especially since he's actually not buying most of these outright, but instead he's buying up calls and puts. This kind of extreme leverage just goes to show you how confident he is in this play. However, these bets haven't actually performed very well. In fact, if we look at the TBT, you can see that it has only fallen. While we can't know the specifics of the calls he bought on this instrument, we can easily infer that he most likely lost a lot of money betting on this. However, the new 13F shows that he's not giving up on it either. Barry has stayed committed to these massive plays that will pay out handsomely if we indeed experience significant inflation in the near future but he has also added to some other positions that may shock you. The biggest update is his big bet against one of the most popular bubble chasers this year, Kathy Wood. The new filing reveals a massive short position which shows that Scion as of June 30th, 2021 owned put contracts against 235,000 shares of the ARK Innovation ETF. As everyone knows by now, the flagship exchange traded fund of Kathy Wood and our firm ARK Investment Management has emerged as the miracle of 2020, investing billions into anything with a story and betting for never-ending growth in countless momentum stocks. Kathy has a very different opinion on the matter, almost opposite of Burry. In fact, she believes in deflation, a rotation back into momentum plays, and this dream of another miracle bull run. She just finished up another interview on YouTube where she discussed her rationale. The comments are quite entertaining. But before I show you, please consider hitting that subscribe button if you're enjoying the video. Now back to the content. Monetary policy. So uh, interestingly, M2's, M2's growth rate has been unwinding since February. It peaked at 27% and it's uh, now roughly 12%. So it's been cut by more than half. Um, and... Uh, we are also hearing from a monetary policy point of view, even the doves on, um, on the Fed 
those who are uh, more prone to easier monetary policies, even they are saying, based on uh, the employment reports we're going to get, if they are strong, as uh, more and more people come back to work uh, after September, if they are strong, then tapering should start. Now, what does that mean? What that means is uh, today the Fed uh, is buying treasury securities and mortgage-backed securities to the tune of $120 billion per month. And what, what they will do is just buy fewer of those. And uh, so we don't think it's going to amount to much. Uh, we know there was a taper tantrum. I think it was in 2013. That's where we first uh, heard that phrase. I don't think the same thing will happen now. Uh, we're on much firmer footing post uh, 08, 09. And the European sovereign debt uh, crisis, at least for now, um, has been allayed. Uh, so we do think there will be tapering. We think that's a good idea. Tapering being a good idea is a very hard opinion to accept. The Federal Reserve is literally, in many people's eyes, propping up this entire market via its tapering and 0% interest policy. If the Fed blinks and Jerome Powell does indeed taper, well you can count that the stock market will indeed crash and the TBT will rise. Ultimately, many on the other side of the argument, such as Peter Schiff, claim that the Federal Reserve would never do this because it pays just to kick the can down the road to someone else. The Federal Reserve actually tried the taper back in 2018, and those results were not too great. In fact, the only thing that saved that market was more interest rate drops and a massive injection of money due to the pandemic. It's strongly believed that any action by the Federal Reserve that reveals even a hint of tapering will ultimately cause a massive market crash. The scenario for those with Barry is pretty simple. The Federal Reserve would rather ignore the inflation problem than deal with it via an interest rate hike. Either that or the Fed will respond way too late, before inflationary psychology takes over and our prices begin to rapidly rise. With interest rates already near zero and trillions already spent on stimulus programs, the Fed is running out of ammo. If Powell pulls the trigger and nothing happens, we'll have the ultimate scenario where the helpless Fed will simply watch as your dollar becomes worthless and their massive debt becomes easier and easier to pay off. The rich, which own tons of inflation-protected assets, will get even richer. The middle class will be wiped out and those on the bottom will stay at the bottom. What happens after is anybody's guess, but those TBT calls will indeed print. There are those on the other side that claim because the United States holds reserve currency status, it is protected against this possibility. But the US is running on a system that since 1971 is based on nothing. In fact, yesterday marks the 50th anniversary of Nixon's decision that the US would no longer officially trade dollars for gold, thus ending the gold era and sending the states into a stagflation hell. Here is Pierre Schiff explaining why this decision ultimately led to the scenario we are in today. Today is Sunday, August 15th, 2021. 50 years ago today, on a Sunday evening, when most of the world's financial markets were closed, then President Richard Nixon interrupted the NBC hit TV Western Bonanza to inform the world that 184 years after the founding fathers put America on a gold standard, that he was taking it off, at least temporarily. That's what he said anyway. On that night, Nixon declared that foreign holders of U.S. Federal Reserve notes, popularly known as U.S. dollars, could no longer be redeemed in gold. In fact, up until 1933, the U.S. dollar was legally defined as a specific weight of gold. So Federal Reserve notes were not technically dollars themselves, they were obligations of the Federal Reserve to pay dollars. But in 1933, during the Great Depression, FDR suspended the convertibility of Federal Reserve notes into dollars, magically transforming obligations to pay dollars into dollars themselves except these new dollars were made of paper rather than gold. However, up until August 15th of 1971, at least foreign governments that held those paper dollars in reserve could still redeem them for physical gold. So those paper dollars still sat on the books of the Federal Reserve as liabilities. Alternatively, those paper dollars were still assets to foreign central banks 
as they could be redeemed on demand in physical gold. In the end, this decision gave the government a free pass to print as much dollars as they needed for whatever reason they deemed important. With no gold backing money, money could be created out of thin air, just as was done recently to recover from the pandemic. The limits of how far we can stretch this incredible economic miracle are being tested as we speak. So far, it looks like nirvana, but this idea of printing money with no backing and having no consequences as a result seems almost too good to be true. Even as the world's reserve currency, this has its limits, and according to many, including Burry, we are very close to the dollar, eroding its value rapidly. In my opinion, Burry is right, but as usual, he's a bit early with his bet. I'm doubling down on my TBT calls, and if you watched my last video, Burry is not stupid. He also has many Google and Apple calls as well to protect himself from stock market inflation. Those calls have printed over the last few months, so while he has likely lost on his treasury bets, he has likely made a lot of money from his big tech calls. Thank you guys for watching. As always, please make sure you hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed the video and if you want to continue enjoying more videos like this.